I've been with my lady for eight years. A lot of times you see single people say that they want relationships. You don't really want relationships. You like the idea of a relationship. You can't handle a relationship because you don't know what real love is. Real love is not what you see on the internet, them posting pictures of each other. He loved me. He posted a picture. That's not love. Let me tell you what real love is. Real love is when you wake up next to your spouse and your spouse is in a good mood and them being in a good mood, fuck your mood up. That's what love is. <laughs> I was seeing this guy and uh, during a conversation he admitted to me that he believes the earth is flat. Yeah, yeah. Did you have that happen to you? Was it him? No, oh, okay, I was gonna say, well damn bitch, you must not care. Um, it was the guy before him. Yeah? No, you already spoke it up. You can't take it back now because now it makes him feel like a genius. He was like, damn, you was with, the earth is round. Okay, calm down, relax. Sorry. This guy said it with such conviction. He was like, yeah, the earth is flat. And I was like, oh my God, who have I been attracting? What does that say about me that I'm attracting dumb motherfuckers that think the earth is flat? What is my self-esteem? I went to college. What is this universe? I told my friend the story. She looks at me, she goes, Chloe, it's your fault. It's your fault because you should have asked him. I was like, is this 1417 or 2017? Who was asking a grown adult if they think the earth is flat? And I can hear the silence in the room. Maybe some of you believe that. I'm gonna tell you something. If you believe the earth is flat, you keep that shit to the grave, okay? <laughs> you put it as a footnote on your will. I'm leaving my Xbox to man, man. By the way, I think the earth is flat. That way we can't judge you because you're dead. You understand? <laughs> you should have asked him. As a single woman dating, there's already so many questions we have to ask. I don't have to ask if the earth is flat. There's so many. Number one, are you married? Two, are you engaged to be married? Do you have any kids? Do you have any kids in the womb? Do you have a job or are you an entrepreneur? Translation, you ain't got no job. Do you eat vegetables? Do you believe in God? Do you know your parents? Do you know your dad? Do you call your mom, mommy, ma, or this bitch? It's a lot of questions we have to ask. My personal favorite, this is the end all be all. You have to look him dead in the face and say, is there anyone who believes that they are in a relationship with you? <laughs> and watches a bead of sweat trickles down. <laughs> and they try to be smart. I mean, I'm not no mind reader. I don't know what people believe. Allow me to say this as a big black guy. I recently used a squatty potty. Now, <laughs> if you don't know what a squatty potty is, it is a footstool for your toilet and that shit is fucking glorious, okay? Let me tell you how it happens. You slide this bitch over, you put your feet up, and shit just does what it's supposed to do, like nature intended it, okay? It is like a frozen song. You just let it go. You ain't got to hold on to the tub or sink for leverage or shit, all right? It's beautiful. And the best part is your feet don't fucking fall asleep. You know what I'm saying? Do you know how beautiful that is to go to the bathroom and your feet don't fucking fall asleep? I know I'm not the only person in here that takes their cell phone in the bathroom, go down a Facebook rabbit hole for 37 and a half minutes. Now your feet numb as shit. You get off the toilet, you walk around like a newborn baby fucking deer by the ankles trying to hold on to some shit. So I use the fucking squatty pot. My ex did this to be nice. He was trying to be a good boyfriend. Are you guys together? He's just giving me a thumbs up, but she's like, what the fuck do you think? Like, <laughs> why would I be sitting here if we weren't together? I get you, girl, your shoulders are out. Have a good summer. Um, <laughs> so I don't know if he does this. My ex did this to me to try to be a good boyfriend. He's like, you're beautiful no matter what. Does he say that to you? Good, you can get fat as hell like I did. Um, he told me, I love you no matter what you look like. My hungry ass heard that and I'm like, dope, great news. I made some cookies about it, right? <laughs> That's how I treat love. <laughs> So I gained 25 quick pounds in that relationship. Now I'm shaped like a sexy Teletubby. Thank you. And that's his real name. I'm petty as hell. Okay. Um, <laughs> fuck it. <yeah. laughs> 
Oh my God, I am really feeling summer though. I wore this crop top so you can't tell I'm sad. Is it working? I don't know. Um, this sh skirt is too short. I didn't know people, people never sit in the front row. You could probably see the lower third of my vagina. I don't know what to say. Um, it's that kind of day. It's that kind of day. <laughs> oh, so, uh, so I gained a bunch of weight in that relationship. But before that, so I told my ex that I used to be a cheerleader back in high school and he's disgusting. So his eyes lit up, right? He got so excited. And it's like, Rebecca, Rebecca, if you still got the uniform, just go ahead and put it on for me. It'll be a lot of fun. And I'm like, okay, why are you saying this? We've been dating for a while. You know I'm crazy as hell. I don't throw shit away. Of course I still have the uniform, right? So get the uniform out. And <laughs> I put this uniform on. We'll say I got it on by the grace of God. That's what we'll say. Um, Cause I was less than half this size in high school. Okay, And now according to t-shirts, I'm now a medium sized man. Shit happens, but so. So I'm in this, this super little uniform. I get into it and I'm proud of myself. I can't breathe. He likes that too. We won't read into it. And uh, he is so turned on that I'm like, okay, is my boyfriend's fetish teenage cheerleaders or big bitches squeezing in a tiny clothes? Like, what does he like about this shit? I don't understand. I am stereotypically black. Most of the shit you think black people doing, I'm doing it by myself, minus the felonies. <laughs> You liable to see me walk out of grocery store with a watermelon under one arm and a live chicken in the other hand. Cause I don't give a fuck what you think about me. Watermelon's awesome and chicken is better, okay? But what's funny is when I'm standing in front of that big ass watermelon bin and a white woman walk up next to me and be like, um, can you help me pick a watermelon? Bitch, if you got enough nerve to ask me to help you, I got enough nerve to help you. Come on, baby, let's get you a goddamn watermelon. <laughs> Shit. I'm stereotypically black, so I love fat booty. I think fat booty is awesome, especially messing around with me. You need to have a fat booty, you understand? Because when I smack you on the ass, I want something to happen. That brings me joy. I don't understand people who don't like fat booty. I moved to LA and everybody got to be thin and willowy and you know, like the hair and addict looking ass bitches in the magazines. Now listen, if you thin, I don't want you to feel bad about yourself. Just don't think I'm gonna chase after you. Cause that's your problem. Too many people chasing after you and you can't sit down and have a decent fucking meal, you know? I did lose a lot of weight last year. I was on Weight Watchers November of last year and on Weight Watchers, I lost like 25 pounds. Hey, no, it's all back, bitch. Forget the wow. And I'm trying to put it, I'm trying to, I gotta get back on the bandwagon again. Weight Watchers, great company. Oprah was right, it's wonderful, but it's very strict. Gotta go to a meeting every week for what? To verify that I'm fat? I have mirrors at home, Kathy. I don't know why. A lot of accountability. You gotta go to a meeting and there's a weekly weigh-in. You're weighed in every week. And the weigh-in is always at these weight loss centers where the fucking windows are right there and all the cars pull up and they can see you get on the scale. And then the weight loss leader lady yells out your scale or your number in front of the whole goddamn room. But then they get mad at me if I want to get butt naked at the weigh-in. <laughs> when you're at home, are you wearing a black dress and denim jacket and fake lashes? No. If you don't want to see a big naked brown bitch in the front window, put the scale on the back. Otherwise, areolas coming out, everything off. I gotta be down point two by tomorrow, bitch. Let's go, come on! Privacy is how we do it at home. And I lost a lot of weight in the first two weeks. First two weeks, when you decide you really want to do it and you don't cheat, the weight just falls off. So in the first week, I was down like three pounds in two days, but I, I, I was an asshole. I thought I was J-Lo. I'm looking on Amazon for a bodysuit. I'm like, bitch, you are not different. You look exactly the same. <laughs> but you know how ladies, it's all in your head. It's all like two pounds. You can barely see me. What the fuck? I am wasting away. So I was a dick to the guy that I was dating at the time. I was dating this really, really fat guy. And by fat, I mean huge, a bust, gigantic man. But he loved me, I loved him, it was all cool. But I became an asshole to him, because I was like, look, I can't be out there in the streets with a fat guy. I'm like, look at your body, and look at what's happening here. I can't be seen, I can't be seen with a fat dude. 
And he was like, yeah, I'm a fat dude, but I have a big dick and I pay for everything. What else do you need? Nothing, my bad. Sorry. <laughs> Love you. Please don't leave me. You know I talk crazy when I'm hungry. Where my woke, uh, my woke white folks at? Where y'all at? Y'all out here. My best friend's woke as fuck. And uh, we talk about social justice a lot. And uh, a couple years ago, true story, I took him, I took him to, um, so there was a guy by the name of Eric Gardner a couple years ago who got choked out by the cops for selling loose cigarettes in New York City. And he kept saying three words. I can't breathe, I can't breathe. It was fucked up. And I, t I took him to this rally and he started crying. I said, why are you crying? He said, Dave, this is so beautiful. I want to take you to one of our rallies next week and show you what's important to my people. I said, man, I love you. I'm there, let's go. Laugh Factory. He took me to this anti-gluten rally that y'all were having, right? Um, and look, you laughing now, but you don't realize this shit, but like, I've lost four friends to bread in 2017. Like, 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 bread is out here destroying white folks. Like, this is not a game. This is not a, I do not want to lose you all to sandwiches. No, I like that. <laughs> I like date night. I love when people like are happy, and I'm single as fuck. But um, it's okay. Like I, I'm a fucking comedian. It's it's normal. Guys don't like dating comedians. That's a fact. Like I'm out six nights a week. They always think you're gonna talk about them on stage, and I'm always around a lot of men. Comedy is super man heavy, so they, they get insecure really quick. So I might date a guy for like three weeks, maybe a month. He's over it, and I don't know if it's because I'm a comedian or because I'm a cheater, <laughs> okay? But either way, like, oh God, you're so petty. Come on, like, Jesus Christ, like, if you can't handle a little infidelity, like, you're not the man for me, no way, all right? Like, you just not. I cheat on you to make you stronger, <laughs> okay? So, stop being a little bitch and love me. Damn, don't miss out on your blessing, I'm amazing, ugh. Crybaby, I hate crybabies, uh, so it's so good. But what I do, what I do do is uh, I like online dating. That shit is fun as fuck. If you online date, clap. Online daters, clap. <laughs> Hell yeah, yeah, it's more than that. I saw some of you on Tinder, so, so it's way more than that. Stop, stop. But you got your little dates, you don't swipe no more. Shut up, all right? I haven't gotten to do much of it because I've been working on a TV show and nobody told me that if I got good at stand-up comedy, they put me on a TV show and make me work 14 hours a day. <laughs> Sober. That's like the opposite of why I got into this game. Plus I just fucking hate jobs. Jobs suck, we all know that. There are no good jobs, even when someone's like, I got a good job, it just means they got a good, bad thing, you know? <laughs> Jobs are horrible. They always want you to work like at least the majority of the day, like five days a week. What? That's too many days. And they don't care about your life. They want you working on holidays. What? They made me work on Martin Luther King Day. I don't know why y'all laughing. There should be a hush silence over the crowd. Cause that's a tragedy. You should, there should be no black person that works on Martin Luther King Day. He didn't want that. He mentioned it in one of his speeches. Not the I have a dream speech, I give you that, but like a later one. He was like, and I have another notion. <laughs> that no black person shall ever have to work on my day. I know I'm getting a day. Look at all the cool shit I'm doing. <laughs>